Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In today's video, I'm going to build a power generator. I got this idea while watching a battle report from Winters SEO. Great channel, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. In the description of the terrain that they were using for that battle, they mentioned some heat exchanges, which pulse with energy and are coursing with extreme power. This description alone triggered my imagination and I decided if I could somehow make my imagination reality. So to begin, I thought a great way to represent these generators coursing with overwhelming energy would be to use some mini plasma balls. So I ordered two from Amazon and set about finding an interesting way to build a superstructure directly over the top of the existing plastic housing. I knew that I had to do a bit more planning than my usual build it on the fly and see what happens approach. But I found that this quickly led me down a path where I cursed myself for not being better at maths. How to convert a circle into a flat sided object. After a bit of head scratching I decided an octagon was a decent shape to begin with and started drawing out a few on paper. In my mind, I was still working in two dimensions, so dealing with flat shapes was relatively easy. It was when I decided to begin making an octagonal pyramid that things started to become more difficult. How to find the correct angles? Basically a lot of head scratching. <laughs> but with some trial and error, I managed to come up with a basic template that would skirt around the existing base and give me some flat surfaces to work onto. I wanted both of the generators to be equal, so I spent some time on getting all my measurements right and everything lined up nicely. Using the template underneath really helped to get all the angles equal. Once happy with my dry fit, I traced these shapes onto some graphics board, a great material to work with, similar to thick card. I can't stress enough, it really is worth taking the extra time at this stage to try to work as accurately as possible, as any mismeasures now would come back to haunt you later down the line. Okay, so with a bit of careful tape here and there, I have my basic shape worked out, but then I realised I would need a solution to be able to switch them on. A simple slit cut at the right height solved this problem. I wanted them to be battery powered so I didn't have any trailing cables running across my battlefield. I also played around with some shapes using thin card to separate the template for the rest of the build. I knew working with a good set of templates would allow me to hopefully save time further on and allow me to accurately recreate shapes giving the build the mechanical sci-fi feel that I was after. So shapes traced. I began to cut everything out. Four arms with two sides over two models. Man, that's a lot of cutting. <laughs> but with everything nicely cut to size as accurately as possible, I began to fix everything into place with some glue. This worked out much better than I first thought it would actually. Using my octagonal template underneath as a guide, I was able to fix each side into place with a little super glue and some activator. And as I made my way around the shape, it became more and more rigid, making the process easier. To make the arms of my generator, I used up some foam offcuts and cut these to size, allowing for an internal width wide enough to accommodate some caps from some vitamin tubes. I've been collecting these since the start of the pandemic as I think they have a really interesting shape and thought this would be a perfect project to use them on. I glued these together as accurately as I could, but accepted that there would be some margin for error. The difference between something hand cut, however accurately, and something machine cut I cut strips to the overall width of my generator arms again to try to keep everything as consistent as possible. 
and then cut these strips to size as needed. I took my time to seal up all the open side and really focused on working as accurately and neatly as possible because I knew that this would really go a long way in helping me achieve the overall clean look I was after. I gave all the edges a quick sand and slowly the overall shape of my crazy idea began to take form. However, with one step forward usually comes two steps back and in this case it was no different. I quickly realised that in order to paint these as a solid shape, I would need to protect the gloss. So I taped these up with some masking tape. I also realised that I would need a top piece to cover the exposed edges. So I got out my paper once again and drew up several octagons until I had the correct size I needed. I cut these in half so I could fit it around the glass bulb and fixed everything into place. I needed a way to cover my exposed switches and came up with the idea of using some connecting piping, not only to hide the gaps but also to somehow link the two structures together. A quick trip to my local hardware store and I found some 22mm piping with some corresponding clips to hold the pipe to the wall and thought this would work nicely as a basis for some industrial piping at a miniature scale. I also picked up some T-junctions and, and some 90 degree elbows to allow me to join several pipes together. And these worked out great, but still look very much like pipes for plumbing. So I knew I had to change the overall shape a bit to make them less recognizable. Just changing the overall silhouette a little and adding some detail would really help with this. I cut the ends of the pipe to the corresponding angle of the sides of my generator just taking a little bit off at a time until I got the angle that I was happy with. In a happy accident, I found that there was a slight gap in one of the sections of the pipe, but it was just enough to slide another sheet of two mil graphic card underneath. Problem solved. But now I needed to build something for this base to make it more interesting. <laughs> and so my idea became ever bigger. I've been saving a couple of bubblegum containers, a tried and tested quick fix for power generators, as they have a really interesting shape to the packaging. A few cuts here and there helped to get these into workable shapes. I also had some hair curlers left over from a previous build, link above if you want to see me build a radar station from them, and cut these to size to use as nice little details to join the power banks together. cut out some thin XPS foam to raise the level a little and began fixing my power banks to my base. This was a little tricky as there was not much surface area to affix the glue to but with a little patience I managed. I also raided my box of bits and found a couple of nice looking industrial shapes and started to add these to my new mini project. Now the key to any project is detail. Using lots of little bits often referred to as greeblies. These can be things that you collected over time, something that you made using other parts, or if you're lucky enough to have a 3D printer, you can just print these out to your heart's content. But I don't have one yet, but I found these silicon molds from Green Stuff World online and thought this would be a project to see if they could be a viable alternative. Using some acrylic resin mixed into a paste with a little water, I cast out some shapes and began to apply these to the model. A few pipes, some control panels, a few warning signs, and suddenly it all started to come to life. I added some wire bent into shape and continued to add little details here and there, trying to imagine a purpose for each area and how it may function. Obviously we're in the world of make-believe, so none of it has to really work, but I find it nice to imagine that it could. So building things in a way that makes some logical sense 
helps with that suspension of belief. With the success of my cast resin details on my power bank, I created a real production line, casting as many shapes as possible whilst working on the other aspects of the model. The resin dries in approximately 30 minutes, so multitasking while the casts dried was a good use of time. I started to attach mini cast pipes to bigger pipes, just to break up the overall recognisable look of my industrial pipes. There was no real plan with this, just playing with shapes and making things up as I went. I continued with this, adding some more wire to further break up the shapes of the pipes and give everything a little bit more detail. I also added some little jewellery beads. Again, leftovers from a previous project, but nice quick solution for adding rivets. I use the term quick here relatively, as applying these one by one did take some time, but once I got into a rhythm, it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Another shape which was included in my silicon moulds were these pre-riveted beams in various sizes. And with a little trimming here and there, I use these to begin to add some detail to the generators themselves. Again, no detailed plan here, just making things up and going with what feels right. I focused my attentions on building up the details on one generator, as I could easily replicate this onto the other one, once I'd made a general guide to work from. I kept adding shapes, pipes, vents and fans to the model and then began joining these shapes together with some strategically placed pieces of wire. Things did feel a little empty at first but the more I added, the more things started to take shape and make sense with each other. Again, trying to make the best use of time, furiously casting away while working on the wiring and cursing the fact that the weather was so cold that everything is taking longer to dry. I replicated all these details onto the second generator and then gave everything a good coat of Mod Podge to seal the cardboard and resin ready for painting. Once primed, I could get into the fun part of painting. After carefully bending little bits of wire into shape, the thought of grabbing some paint felt like a real victory. I gave the model a light dusting of a neutral gray to add some tonal difference and a nice base to work up from. I wanted to really utilize the molded pattern in the bubblegum boxes to create a glowing effect. So I th painted the recesses with some acrylic white. And started to undercoat the pipes on the power generators. I'm not gonna lie, suddenly the thought of carefully bending wires seemed appealing again. This took quite some time, but deep down I knew it would be worth it in the end. I continued this theme across the connecting pipes, 
and then started picking out the smaller wires in gunmetal. I also picked out the rivets and some of the detail on the upright supports. And while I had this colour out, I picked out the wiring and the metalwork on the power generators. I felt like I needed a lighter colour just to break up the dark grey a little, so I grabbed some light grey and based in the borders and some of the terminals. This just helps to separate some of the details. It's amazing how a splash of colour can also help with detail. So I added some red and green buttons and lights. I washed all of this down with some homemade brown and black wash, which seeps into the grooves and gaps wonderfully. I grabbed my airbrush and some white ink and started to haze in a light halo to begin the glowing effect. I use ink because it seems to mist into smaller particles than acrylic paint, giving a really nice hazy effect. I then took some blue candy paint, which is basically a, a very transparent ink, and then dusted over the white halo. Because it's a candy paint, it will only show up on the lighter areas underneath and remain transparent on the darker areas. And finally, I switched back to white and carefully sprayed in some small areas just to represent some pulses of light. And there we are. That brings me to the end of this video. I got inspired by the smallest of ideas and let this idea slowly grow. Of course, the project ended up a bit more extensive than originally planned, but I'm so pleased with the result and as a little set, it looks amazing on the tabletop. I really like these building projects because they always throw up problems that need solving. This one certainly tested my math skills, that's for sure. Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas on how I could expand this terrain set. If you'd like to support the channel, you can subscribe, leave a comment below and share it with a friend who might find it interesting. Thank you all for your amazing support and see you in the next video. Enjoy.